Hello and welcome to our new uh, Open Charge Alliance webinar. My name is Martijn Siemens. I am a communications officer here at uh, the OCA. And today we will be discussing the possibilities of uh, integrating OCP at uh, filling stations. Uh, in a moment, Frank Buve will join us uh, live for a live presentation about the white paper we are publishing on this subject. Uh, followed by a pre-recorded presentation by Michel Bayings, uh, in which he will share his insights. Uh, after this, uh, we will have time for some Q&A, and uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please ask them in the questions box. We have about 60 minutes, uh, so I want to start uh, quickly. Uh, Frank, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, the floor is yours. Okay. So welcome at this uh, webinar where I would like to uh, yeah, to present to you a uh, new uh, Open Charge Alliance white paper about uh, how we can integrate OCPP charges at filling stations. So uh, quickly a little bit about me. I'm, my name is Frank Buve. I work for the Open Charge Alliance and I uh, yeah, have been involved with OCPP from the very beginning. I created the first release in 2010 been architecting two CSMSs in the meantime, and uh, I'm now working as a technical editor for the Open Charge Alliance, where I write specification documents, uh, white papers, and I run the uh, Open Charge Alliance uh, task groups. Because in the Open Charge Alliance, we organize task groups for yeah, topics in the immobility uh, market that relate to or may affect OCPP. And at the moment, we are hosting uh, four task groups. The vehicle to grid task groups that designs extensions to OCPP to support uh, yeah, V2X uh, use cases. We have the ISO 1511 20 task group that designs an extension to OCPP to support a new DES20 functionality. And we have a networking task group that designs a networking extension to OCPP that will make it possible to create a topology of uh, charging stations in your network. And then uh, finally, we have the OCPP and filling stations uh, task group, which was the task group that has uh, written this uh, this white paper, and it has been active uh, here for about a, a year, coming together every month and uh, yeah, sharing experiences, and finally culminating in the publication of this white paper. So why do we need this? Uh, this white paper. Well, we see that the number of electrical vehicles is growing rapidly, and the sale of new internal combustion engines, uh, yeah, is going to be uh, banned after 2030 in several countries already. So, uh, yeah, this will mean that in the end, the existing filling stations, if they do not start to support electric charging, they are doomed to become a niche market. So, we already see uh, charging stations being installed at or around uh, four cores or several locations, but it's often without an integration with the filling station. And this means that it's not possible to pay in the shop for charging, like you would when filling up with fuel. And, uh, well, the, the early adopters and the people driving EVs uh, at, at the moment are used to using charge cards from e-mobility uh, service providers. But uh, yeah, the drivers to come might maybe prefer to stick to the old routine of, of paying in the shop after charging. So you need an integration with the with the point of sales shop in order to uh, support that. And the the retailer would probably also like to have an integration with its uh, back office uh, to, to to support all kinds of uh, administrative tasks about the charging that has been going on. So, in this webinar, I would like to discuss the following four topics with you uh, this morning. Uh, the first is that who should manage the charging stations and what options do we have there? Then, uh, if we have charging stations, how can we integrate them with the four court systems, uh, your site controller, for example? Uh, what kind of payment methods can or should we support? And uh, finally, uh, how can we integrate a, a payment terminal uh, for credit or debit card uh, payments with charging stations? Okay, 
now uh, who should manage the charger uh, as a as a uh, retailer or uh, that means the, the the entrepreneur that's running the the filling station shop uh yeah should he manage the, the charging stations himself or are there other options so uh, i basically see three uh, different approaches here one is that the retailer owns and manages his own chargers uh, the other end of the spectrum is where the retailer fully outsources all charging stations to a charging station operator and finally uh, the retailer has charging stations but contracts a charging station operator to manage the charges for him i will briefly discuss each of these three options so uh, uh, first the, the the situation where the stations are managed locally by the retailer well, just as a fuel dispenser needs a side controller to, to, to control a fuel dispenser, a charging station also needs a controlling system. We call it a CSMS, a charging station management system. So if you control these stations locally on your forecourt, you need to have a CSMS there that controls the charging stations. It can be a fairly simple system probably because you only have a handful of chargers, but you need something like that. Let me briefly show the the flow of uh, of events here. If an EV uh, connects to the charging station, then uh, the charging station will speak OSPP with the CSMS. Uh, OSPP is the standard open charge point protocol from the Open Charge Alliance, and uh, the CSMS can be connected to the point of sales uh, system in the shop via a Custom interface. This can be yeah, the, the, an interface that is an, an API that is provided by the point of sale system, for example. Then the EV driver can pay for the charge at the shop, and the payment is then uh, for the retailer. Well, this has the advantage, this setup, that you can just pay at the shop like a regular uh, fueling, but it also has uh, some, some disadvantages, namely. In this situation, you do not support the use of EMSP charge cards by the uh, electric vehicle uh, customer. Because if you want to support uh, charge cards, that means that you need to have uh, a connection to the EMSP and a, a contractual agreement with the EMSP to support its charge cards. And it's probably too uh, complex or too costly as a retailer to create connections with uh, tens or maybe a hundred EMSPs, because there are a lot of EMSPs in the charging business, uh, to support a wide range of, uh, of charge cards. Uh, another disadvantage in this situation uh, would be that a uh, retailer is in charge of, of managing these charging stations. And especially if we're talking about how high power charging stations, they're not uh, trivial devices, so they have a lot of uh, configuration uh, settings uh, and monitoring that you would probably want to do, which is knowledge that the retailer normally doesn't have and probably doesn't want to to have either. So, uh, yeah, a common solution to this is what we often see is that retailers decide to fully outsource the charging business to a CSO. Uh, so the, the fully outsourcing basically means that the retailer tells a charging station operator, okay, you can just install some of your charging stations at my forecourt and uh, you pay me like a, like a, like a monthly fee uh, as the location owner for letting you install the charges uh, on my site. And for the rest, I really don't have anything to do with it. If you have this situation, then you basically don't have any integration with your point of sale system. And you can support the charge card charging. And the flow for that would be something like this. The vehicle connects to a charging station and uh, authorizes with uh, its charge card. And the EV driver has a contract with the EMSP, uses its charge card. The EMSP has a roaming agreement with, with the CSO because this is probably a big 
charging station operator that has uh, roaming connections uh, with, with most EMSPs. And all charging revenue goes to the charging station operator and the charging station operator just pays a location owner fee to the retailer. So that, this is yeah, a risk uh, and hassle-free solution for the retailer, but it also means he does not get any of the charging revenue. So he's probably not, also not, uh, yeah, not in his interest to, to promote the electric charging and he does not uh, benefit from the uh, increasing uh, increase in electrical charging. Uh, so uh, the third alternative might then be more convenient for the re retailer and that would be to, to own your own charging stations but have them being managed by a charging station operator whose profession it is to do, to do this. So in this case you can support both the paying at the point of sales terminal and paying with a charge card. So uh, the, the charging station management system is located outside of the forecourt uh, in the cloud somewhere. It is the, it's the system from the charging station operator. Uh, but we can still pay at the point of sales terminal because uh, Vico connects with, with the charger and the, we have created an integration between the CSMS from the CSO and your point of sales terminal. We'll get into the details of that in a minute. Then the EV driver can pay at the point of sales terminal and the payment goes to the retailer. And the retailer pays a monthly management fee, for example, to the CSO for uh, monitoring these uh, charges. Uh, but the paying with a charge card is also still supported because uh, the charge card scenario, uh, like we just sketched, also still works. The uh, EV driver has contact with the EMSP, so he pays with his charge card, charge card. the EMSP uh, pays it to the CSO, and the CSO has agreed to pay this revenue to a retailer, and then the retailer returns a monthly management fee to the CSO. So this, uh, yeah, I think is probably the best of both uh, worlds. Now, of course, important it is that we have the integration between the CSMS and the point of sales terminal. And uh, for that we see two options. One is that you use a roaming protocol like OCPI, for example, to connect your point of sales terminal to the CSMS. Another option is to use a local controller on site at the forecourt. And a local controller is a, 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 a term from uh, OCPP. It's basically a, a system like a, a small local, local CSMS which can perform some, uh, some functionalities of the central CSMS in a, yeah, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a site that it is managing. Let me first uh, explain the, the, the OCPI uh, situation. If you integrate via OCPI, because uh, OCPI is the, uh, the protocol that's also used, for example, to connect EMSPs with uh, charging station operators. Uh, when you connect via OCPI, then that means that uh, the point of sales terminal and the CSMS can communicate with each other, which means that at the point of sales terminal, you can uh, tell the CSMS that it is allowed to start a charging transaction, for example, for this user. And when the charging session has finished, the CSMS will send the consumed energy to the point of sales terminal so that you can perform the payment uh, over there. Uh, but a, uh, this is, the advantage of this method is that you don't need any additional hardware. You just need to implement this OCPI protocol on your or part of it on the on the point of sales terminal. Uh, but a disadvantage is that you are dependent on the internet connection towards the CSMS. So if there's an internet uh, network outage, for example, you cannot reach the CSMS. 
then that means that you cannot start any charges on your forecourt. So this is probably a, a risk. Well, in the in the paper, uh, we describe exactly which messages need to be exchanged between the various uh, system. I will not go to into uh, into the detail here in the webinar because it will take too long and will probably also be too technical for for some. But you can uh, look it up in the white paper. Now, the other option is to use a local controller. And uh, the local controller is, is, a, is a module at the side of the, uh, of the forecourt. And it could maybe be, be part of the, uh, the side controller that you already have there. And what it does, it sits between the charging station and the CSMS. And it will forward messages from the charging station to the CSMS. But it can also decide to send certain messages from the charging station to the point of sales terminal or vice versa. And uh, even though it's technically a little bit more uh, complex, I think the big advantage is that you're not so dependent on, the, on your internet connection because this runs locally. You might have a, a local area network connection with, with your charging stations and your point of sales terminal. So if you lose the internet connection with the CSMS, it really doesn't matter because the point of sales terminal can still speak with the charging station and vice versa. So you can still run your charging station sessions on the station without having a network connection. And once the network connection is restored, then the local controller can uh, send the data to the CSMS. Now I will, just to, to, to demonstrate it, show you a few messages on how uh, post-paid charging with the lo local controller is uh, supported and how we can emulate uh, the, the process of fueling uh, also with the charging station. So normally when you want to fuel a car and uh, you take the, the host from its holster, then at that moment uh, a call will made uh, or, or a bell will ring in, in the shop and the retailer will give you permission to start pumping. Well, we can uh, simulate that or emulate that with a charging station as well. At the moment that you connect your EV, that could send a signal to the retailer. Or sometimes you might maybe even have to press a start button, but uh, that would be the same. So you connect your EV, then at that moment, the charging station will request authorization to start charging. And normally, if you present a charge card, it would request authorization from the e-mobility service provider or from the charging station operator to start charging. In this case, since the charging station is connected to the local controller, it will send the authorized command to the local controller. And the local controller will then uh, issue a call to the point of sales system. This can be uh, standard interface from the point of sales system. Exactly, it could be exactly the same API as is used by a, a fuel pump, for example. That means that uh, the retailer, or the cashier, has to press a button to release the, the charger for uh, for charging, and that returns an OK on the authorization. And at that point, the charging can start. So, the charging station will signal that OK. I have an OK. I have started a transaction. Then the vehicle will start to charge. And in the meantime, you will get events about the consumed uh, energy. Uh, so you can keep a, keep a counter of how much, how many kilowatt hours are being uh, charged by the vehicle. And uh, after some time, the user will stop charging. And a message will be sent to local controller that the transaction has ended. As you see at this moment, there's no communication needed towards the CSMS. At all these moments, the local controller can also notify the CSMS that the transaction has started or that the transaction has ended, but it's not required for the, for the process. 
Then once the transaction has been uh, stopped, uh, the local controller will uh, signal the end of the, of the charging to the point of sales terminal. Uh, the retailer knows the charging has finished and it will request press a button to see, okay, what's the cost? How many energy has been uh, consumed? And it can request this cost from the local uh, controller who knows it. Uh, it's shown on the display and then the driver can pay at the retailer. So um, I hope to have shown with, with this process that yeah, you can you can just support the normal postpaid uh, charging or paying at the for yeah, postpaid charging and paying at the point of sales terminal uh, with this uh, setup. And you can also implement uh, prepaid. I will not explain it here, but it is in the paper. It's slightly different because in that case you first pay at the retailer and then the retailer starts the session, but it is also uh, supported. Okay. Well, at the moment in in filling stations, uh, yeah, the predominant payment methods are yeah postpaid or prepaid, or you have an outdoor payment terminal yeah, where you can, uh, for, for example, also use the filling sta the, the the fuel pumps after closing hours, and of course as a support for fuel cards. For uh, charging stations, yes. A few different uh, payment methods. We have the EMSP charge cards, which yeah you can compare probably with uh, with fuel cards. And we have the use of payment terminals. These are the, the common ways to pay for your charging uh, at the moment. And we also see coming now two automatic payment methods: the auto charge and the ISO 1511-8 plug and charge. Now, these are methods where you do not need to present a charge card anymore, but Upon connecting your vehicle, the vehicle will authenticate itself, will represent a, a contract or an ID uh, that can be used for invoicing the, the session. With this integration with the point of sales terminal that we have shown here, we can now also support postpaid payment in the shop and prepaid payment. So then you can, yeah basically support everything that the user, uh, the, the current uh, combustion engine user is, is used to. Then I get to my last uh, topic, is the integration of payment terminals, because this is yeah, becoming an important topic. Uh, recently, uh, Germany introduced legislation that mandates public charging Public stations to be equipped with payment terminals, and also the European Union is uh, thinking of this in the new alternative fuels infrastructure regulation, uh, where they're thinking of uh, mandating uh, payment terminals for fast chargers. Well, uh, the OSPP specification is yeah, only about the communication between the backend and the charging station. It does not cover payment methods because that's not handled by the backend, or it is involves systems that involve other parties yeah, like payment providers. But any identifier can be used by OSPP for authorization. So you could also use like uh, credit card numbers, credit authorization references, or other unique identifiers to uh, to grant the authorization to charge. So in this white paper, we uh, describe four different methods that you can use to support uh, payment terminals or credit card payments with OSPP chargers. Uh, one option is to use a smartphone app, something that's already used by uh, many uh, EMSP uh, uh, charging apps. Another option is to integrate it in the charging station. Or a uh, third option to use an outdoor payment terminal where you have one terminal with a credit card uh, reader that supports several charging stations. And the last option is that where the payment provider actually takes a kind of EMSP role, 
Africa, where you, upon uh, providing your credit card, the payment provider will actually issue a command to the CCMS to start the charging. So these options are explained in more detail in the in the white paper. Well, this brings me to the end of my uh, talk. Uh, yeah, I'd like to point out this: the, this paper can be found on the website of OpenChargeAlliance.org under the uh, info and white papers uh, menu. And uh, next, there will be a case study by Michel Byings of Immobility Consulting, who was also part of this uh, white paper, and he has. Uh, recorded a presentation because he couldn't be present at this moment but uh, yeah i hope this will also be very interesting and with that i would like to hand over control to uh, martijn again ah yes thank you frank yes as frank has mentioned uh, we have a pre-recorded presentation by michel Bynings. and let's see if technology doesn't fail us i will Start it in a moment. Uh, yes, and uh, as mentioned afterwards, uh, there is room for some questions, and uh, we will try to answer them. Uh, Frank will try to answer them. Um, so let's see. Here we go. Yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, I want to discuss with you the challenges of combining charging stations, uh, which are quite new, which exist for the last 12, 13 years, and the traditional old world uh, fuel pumps and how to combine them. Um, this is a real world situation that I will uh, show and discuss with you. Um, and uh, you can also visit this, uh, this, this location. My name is Michel Bayings. I'm working for Immobility Consulting, which is based in France and the Netherlands. Um, and I have um, approximately 13 years experience now in all kinds of projects, um, a lot to do with OCPP, a lot to do with OCPI, and always busy with removing charge uh, barriers for EV charging. And one of the challenges um, was the project that I was asked to assist for, how to um, add charging stations um, in a traditional situation from a fuel station with all kinds of additional requirements. And we also faced several challenges there and I will describe them and I will discuss them with you and present them. And finally, of course, also the solutions, what happened and how we did it. The location itself, to give you an overview of where it is, um, it is on the A28 um, in the Netherlands, uh, where um, there is quite a modern and innovative location, or you could see it as a kind of fueling hub for um, 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 trucks. It is an, an trucks and, and personal vehicles, of course. It is um, um, a privately owned uh, a hub, privately owned fuel station. Um, they deliver currently Shell fuel, but the, it is not it is not owned by Shell. And um, they created a kind of field lab um, in a modern setting where um, you can have all kinds of smart charging facilities uh, where you have um, um, connections with uh, outdoor payment terminals, where you have um, um, connections with energy management systems, with battery storage, uh, charging stations for personal vehicles, charging stations for trucks, um, a lot of um, PV, so solar panels um, 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 in all kinds of, of, of ways. And they combine that in one of the most innovative um, um, fuel stations that currently exist. Um, the setup um, was based on this overview where they um, want to um, not only supply and deliver energy, but also generate energy. And they want to do that for trucks. As you can see also on the right corner, they also look a bit at uh, hydrogen, 
um, but I want to focus currently on the challenges that we face with the, uh, uh, with the electric charging stations. They um, installed a situation where PV, so where solar was placed on roofs, but also placed on, um, in the field, outside in the field. Um, they had three types of different charging stations, what they wanted from a relative low uh, power to ultra fast charging. So from 60 kilowatts up to 350 kilowatts um, DC charging. Um, this needed to be combined with an OPT, an outdoor payment terminal that you can see on the right, with cash, with PIN, with credit card, um, uh, fuel tank cards. Um, so that should all be used. And on the other side, you see on the left side that they wanted to use all kinds of advanced smart charging systems, including including um, 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 uh, uh, FCR, so for prediction, um, um, including buying uh, 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 energy already from the grid up front and all kinds of interesting mechanisms. The um, main requirements in this location, and on the right side you see a picture of that location, is that they wanted to give the user, um, but also the shop owner, a similar way of using it as traditional fuel pumps. So they did not want to totally change behavior um, or require a total change of behavior and um, different way of working. They wanted um, the management of the stations, but also the transactions done by Green Planet, by the organization that owns the charging station, which means that no external organization should manage the infrastructure, but done by themselves. They also wanted to connect it to existing reporting system. And this is quite an interesting and important part in the fuel stations, because in fuel station business, they you quite often have a situation where fuel stations, um, but also um, car washing systems, shop, etc., is all combined in one existing reporting tool and mechanism. And they did not want additional reporting systems for that, also for their accounting. And besides that, and it was, I think, one of the most challenging things was the requirement to combine it with advanced energy optimization, where we looked at smart charging, at load balancing, different tariffs when load balancing started, but also uh, smart charging up to certain limits, um, taking into account the available amount of grid, of energy from the grid, um, and all these kind of things combine it with storage when energy was cheap um, um, also use the storage when uh, a certain part of smart charging was needed. Uh, I already mentioned the PV, so the solar in fields, but also on the roof where the fields are uh, a bit more challenging because they are outside their direct premises, their, their direct locations. And finally also the forecasting and the energy um, um, sales that they wanted to take into account. Then that also resulted in a few challenges. Um, one is that, um, and that's quite an important one, that the electric vehicle charge point operator role and activities, that they do not really match a system where um, Others want to totally control it and want to combine it with um, existing reporting systems when they want to combine it with existing payment systems. We are so used to use it either for ad hoc access with some kind of direct payment or to use it with um, either um, uh, tokens via mobile app or physical RFID cards, but not via a cash payment system in a shop. Um, um, we are used to a situation where the charging stations are more or less unmanned, used and not in a meant situation. So also the charge point management systems are not set up, at least most of them, to be used in a totally managed environment. Um, another challenge is that most charge point management systems are looking um, and are set up for 
the charge point management system for, for, the, for the charging infrastructure, which is logic. But more and more we see that there is an interest of um, dealing also with the energy uh, management part and dealing with storage and dealing with all kinds of different assets. Maybe even with some fuel cells and how to take that into account, the available energy stored in fuel cells that you can also finally then use again to create electricity for your vehicles. But there are not many um, operating systems, charge point management systems that are capable to deal with that. I already mentioned the challenge of reporting, which is uh, an important part because um, uh, it does, doesn't also really make sense to have different reporting streams. So creating separate overviews of, of, of CDRs and transactions where it's currently all combined in existing systems also for their fueling system and their other uh, things that they use at fuel stations. So the shop, um, maybe a food court, um, but also washing, uh, car washing and truck washing systems that is all combined via existing and one single reporting system. And now we come there. So well, we have our own charge point management system with its own reporting. Um, so there was another challenge. Uh, and finally, um, and that's an interesting one, that from the other side, fuel stations are not used to connect to all kinds of external systems. They are not used for connecting to external mobility service providers. They, of course, have their fuel cards, but they are not used to that, to, um, um, to connect to hundreds of roaming partners. They are not used to connect to national access points um, or other navigation system and national access points are used in Europe for sharing and it's an uh, uh, obligation by, by law, by European law, to connect and to display the uh, location and availability of charging infrastructure. So we finally came to two solutions. We said, well, there are two ways to look at it. One, you can create all kinds of individual connections between your system um, and not using a charge point management system. This creates custom development, but then it's totally in your own hands and you are not dependent of anyone. The other option is looking for a charge point management system, realizing that there is not a perfect match. There is no perfect fit for that. So we looked at both scenarios and I want to briefly show you those two scenarios. To start with the first scenario, um, we um, have all kinds of individual connections. And that means that um, the charging station, which is a bit in the middle, um, which normally has only one OCPP connection. And here we talk about 1.6. We will pr probably talk now about 2.0.1. 2 um, but there's just one connection. You can't use that for all kinds of different connections. You also have only one um, um, router in it to connect to it. So, so well, in that case, um, it goes probably to the post, to the point of sale terminal in the shop, where we have the retailer, we have also the EV driver. Um, <coughs> and that means that POS plays quite a central role here also with their back office for reporting. And then we have connection for support to the manufacturer of the charging station. We also have a VPN connection, a separate connection for support. Because external support, when something goes wrong and the, at the shop they can't deal with it, then you need to have external support. The more challenging was that they wanted to have all kinds of advanced energy management systems. And I do not want to go too deep in it, but it is about forecasting, it is about price mechanisms um, um, and all that, these kind of things that I wanted to deal with. So um, you also need to find a connection for that. And if you do it totally on your own um, and you do not want to create a separate system, charge point management system by your own in the middle, but you want to have it done by the charging station, then you get quite some challenges here, as you can see, because the, uh, the charge point becomes a kind of a kind of central central system, central hub, and the charge stations are not manufactured for that. They are do, are not equipped for that. So this is described also, and the slides are of course 
available. This is also described in these, this scenario explanation where um, um, there is quite a central role for both the charge station but also for the point of sale and point of sale systems are also not used and built to manage all that and to manage to get all that data from a charging station. So we then described also scenario two and scenario two uh, requires indeed a special charge point management system in between. Um, but there are different ways to look at it and different options and we see more and more that charge point management systems will be capable for dealing with it. So then you have one connection for the OCPP um, to the charge station and the charge point management system is dealing with all kind of EMS systems with the energy mix systems with the forecasting etc. It is all controlled via the central system so you get a real central management system in between and then still you can be in control as fuel station owner or um, 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 as, as location owner um, but it is managed by a system which is equipped for that. The system can talk OCPP and OCPP to the charging station and OCPI to the external systems, OCPI to the point of sale can deal with external tokens via the EV driver instead of only being able to pay at the shop. So you have that roaming mechanism in between. Um, you can also use it directly to pay, um, to use it for ad hoc access at the auto payment terminal. Uh, and an interesting one is that it, you can fulfill to legal obligations like a national access point and you can connect to that one via OCPI. Um, then still we have the challenge for the interface to the back office because currently a lot of monitoring is done at the central system. So it does require a few modifications and that's exactly what we looked at and worked out in our white paper about how to deal with this and how it could work. So that is all described in this scenario where um, payment at the outdoor payment terminal, OPT and the point of sale um, terminal can be done um, and charging can be done via plug and charge. You can also use charging cards um, and um, uh, uh, all kinds of other systems where, and I think that's quite interesting, where the operating systems, CPMS is managing all kinds of external systems and connections. And that is a, very, a great value of it. So what was finally the outcome of um, uh, and realization what we did because there was strong desire to have it all controlled by Green Planet so not by any external suppliers. So they started with scenario one as they wanted to be in control what I mentioned but they also realized actually from the beginning that this was not a long-term sustainable um, solution because of the legal obligations to connect to different systems and finally also that you will have customers who come there with their own MSP token card can also be in their app and say well I want to charge here with this token with this card and having your own uh, developed system that is hard to manage because you do not want to set up all kind of roaming connections by yourself so they split it in two phases one phase was scenario one to start with to make it kind of proof of concept and then quickly move over and that's where they are now to the second phase and realizing it with all kind of, of, of situations or with all kind of, of um, uh, uh, benefits but also hoping and expecting and that is also the truth that currently charge point management systems are we are now one or two years later are much more capable of connecting all kinds of different assets and uh, being able to say well the reporting can be done via an external system and I think that's interesting because that is really required besides the challenges of the payment which is done via an external point of sale system which is also not quite common for um, um, for the use of, 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 of uh, 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 tra traditional charge point management systems but they are more and more capable for it sometimes with some modifications but it's definitely the way to go to go for a central system owned by 
um, or, or managed by the fuel station owner or location owner and um, that way being in control and being finally much more flexible and much more valuable and of course the challenge with their energy systems and all kind of things um, that needs to fit in with their own algorithm is still a challenge um, but that's also the best way because creating and having own individual custom-made connections um, will not last for long with all kinds of updates with all kinds of challenges with all kinds of issues that you face um, so this is what they chose and this is also what I strongly believe is the right way to go this is what I wanted to show you um, this is what I wanted to present to you you can visit the location if you want it is based in the Netherlands um, but it is very interesting project and I hope it is useful and you, you learn something from it or um, that that that's yeah it, it's it's it is in benefit of also your um, how, what you want to do um, and of course of course you can always contact me or contact us or contact the organization um, who has also worked on the white paper and together with a lot of companies we worked on it because we realize that more and more fuel stations will also combine it with charging will also combine it with energy management systems um, it was an honor to present this for you um, enjoy the rest of the presentation and goodbye for now okay thank you michel if you're listening to this uh frank can you join me Yep. We have some questions and let's see, we have about 13 minutes um, to answer them. Let's see what we got. Um, first question, uh, does the integration of a filling station use the device model of the OSPP charging station? Uh, so are there additions for this? Uh, well, not not necessarily i mean the device model is a very flexible uh, part of ospp where you can store all kinds of configurations and, and values that you would like to monitor this integration is just based on standard ospp messages and you can of course always decide to store all kinds of specific configurations for your situation there but it, it's not 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 a requirement for this integration okay Let's see. Is there a standard interface or API between a local controller and the POS? Uh, yeah, we, we uh, of course we we do not define the interface with the POS with the point of sales uh, terminal. Um, these uh, the devices normally have their own interfaces or APIs that you also use to communicate with the fuel dispensers, for example. Uh, I did take a look at the uh, standard API uh, that is given by the uh, IFSF, the International uh, Four Core Standards Forum, uh, just to, to, to see if it would be possible to use such a standard API in, in this case, and that is, that is indeed the case, so you can use that. And there will also undoubtedly be many proprietary APIs, but they should be able to support these kind of simple messages. Okay, and a very practical uh, question. We all know uh, the freebies at gas, uh, gas stations, filling stations. So uh, will it be possible to use a loyalty program in combination with electric charging? Uh, yes, but you need to define, of course, uh, how you want to do it who wants to give the, the loyalty i mean if you are a retailer and you want to encourage customers to use your station uh, you can give loyalty points for example each time they charge at your uh, location but you probably would have to be paying at your point of sales terminal at your in your shop uh, because if you're just paying with, with an emsp card then uh, yeah it, it's probably the EMSP that's doing the, the loyalty program. Uh, but uh, you, know, you will be aware of the charging taking place. Uh, certainly if you use a, 
a local controller uh, integration. So you could decide as a retailer to also give your own loyalty points just by using your station, even if they're using an EMSP charge card. Yeah. So we, we don't go into the details for that in, in the paper, but it is te technically possible. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Shilpa Quattra wants to know, can't we face internet connectivity issues with local controller as we face uh, with uh, CSMS? No, with the local controller, you don't have that problem so much because the local controller can uh, yeah, function without an internet uh, connection. Eh? If it has lost the internet connection with the CSMS, it will still have a connection with your charging station and your point of sales terminal. I'm assuming that the local connections are uh, hardwired, have a LAN based. So that will still work. And then the uh, local controller can uh, cache all this information and then later send it to the CSMS. Of course, the uh, that's for the point of sales payment. Uh, charge card charging might not be possible because uh, the local controller needs to contact the CSMS to, to get authorization. So that part might not work unless you have a, a large whitelist in your local controller where you know, okay, the whole this whole list of tokens I will accept anyway. So uh, you're definitely much less vulnerable if you have a local controller than when you have the OCPI uh, integration. Okay, thank you. And to anybody uh, listening, if you have questions, please ask them in the questions box. We have a little time, maybe one or two questions. Let me see. Um, does the integration also take into account displaying prices to EV users? Uh, yes and no. Um, uh, in order to display the, the price while charging on your, on your charging station, the charging station probably needs to, to, to calculate the, uh, the, the price real time. And uh, we've actually created a, a, a special white paper on, the, on this topic. It's called, uh, what's, what's the name? Uh, uh, California uh, Pricing Re Requirements, I believe it was called. Because in California, they now have a regulation where charging stations should display real-time uh, price information. And so we have a paper there. And we also refer to that paper in, the, in our white paper where you can find exactly how you can configure your charging stations to uh, to support this real-time price display. Okay, thank you. And uh, as mentioned, uh, this white paper, California pricing, is, uh, was uh, available, is still available uh, on our website uh, in the white papers menu. See, another question, can I use plug and charge when the charger is integrated with the filling station? Yeah, you definitely uh, can. And uh, because the, the, the plug and charge situation is uh, yeah very similar to the EMSP charge card situation. The only difference is that the charge card is more or less uh, uploaded into the vehicle. So the vehicle uh, presents its uh, contract to the charging station uh, itself. And then, but then the, the, the whole payment still goes via the EMSP and the charging station operator. Uh, yeah, so that mechanism is also uh, supported. Okay, let's see. We have, oh no, there are a lot of uh, questions coming in. Um, let's see, are there any regulatory approvals required for POS or local controllers such as MID in the case of petrol filling stations? Question by Gary. Uh, I don't consider myself an expert on regulatory approvals, but uh, I don't think there will be any uh, approvals for the for the uh, special approvals for the point of sales terminal. Of course, there are uh, regulations for the charging station, so the charging station uh, needs to be uh, validated. And you might have situations like in, in Germany with the the uh, the, uh, the calibration law requirements that apply to the charging stations but assuming that the charging station has been uh, validated is according to regulations then the fact that it's uh, uh, request permission to start charging or or sends the the, the the final amount to the to the pos 
I don't think that requires any other uh, regulations. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, it's another legal question, and I think you may have answered it uh, with your last uh, answer, but maybe you can get into it a little bit more. Um, Heike Koyevula, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, uh, asks, uh, how do you take into account legal metro metrology requirements like the German Eichrecht, as you mentioned? So. Yeah, that is... Uh... Yeah, something that uh, has to be taken into account by the charging station operator and the charging station manufacturer. Uh, OCPP provides the support for that. So an important thing with, with the German Eichrecht is that you need to send uh, digitally signed meter values so that you can uh, verify the authenticity of these meter values. This is uh, supported by, uh, by OCPP. Uh, so th the same mechanism would also work in uh, uh, in a forecourt uh, situation, so that it's it's not mentioned in the white paper, but that it's not related to the integration. Okay, let's see. Yeah, the clock is still ticking, and I think we need to wrap this up. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Frank. Uh, thank you, Michel, if you're listening. Um, as mentioned, the entire white paper, integrating OSP chargers at uh, filling stations. Uh, will available on our website um, and you should check out our website anyways because we have a lot of exciting events coming up uh, for instance the OSP plug fest on uh, june 9 and 10th you can still register your device this week uh, this we uh, this uh, webinar we uh, about uh, the, the integration of OSP um, will be repeated later today in about seven hours and a recording Question. One moment. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to. Yep. And let's see. Um, this webinar will be repeated later today, and a recording will become available uh, later of a, no early um, next week. Thank you all, and I hope to see you soon. Uh, goodbye for now. And I will end this webinar. Thank you very much.